It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Change makers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. Today's guest, Shannon Dingle, has experienced staggering tragedy and trauma in her life, including surviving sexual abuse and trafficking as a child and the loss of her husband. But through the grief, she learned to find hope. In her first book, Living Brave, Lessons from Hurt, Letting the Way to Hope, she gives women permission to be brave in the darkest times. Shannon is a disability activist and freelance writer. Her story has been featured by Today, NPR, Good Morning America, and in The Atlantic and The Wall Street Journal. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, Shannon, you've experienced so much pain and loss in your life, and I'm really sorry for everything that you've had to endure. So let's begin by starting with your story from the early years. What happened to you when you were a child? Um, When I was a child, I was born into a family that I thought was completely normal because as a kid, you don't know any different. I was the youngest of three in a family that was very, very concerned about outward appearances, but not about much of anything else. And so as long as everything looked good, whether or not things were good was irrelevant. Um, I began uh, experiencing sexual abuse at a very young age. By the time I was Wrapping up middle school, it escalated to sex trafficking, where basically my dad allowed men to um, to continue that same abuse for a price. Um, and then basically my focus uh, through a lot of those years was that if I could make it to 18, then I could go to college, I could get out of there. I could make it through anything after that. I just needed to live long enough to get to adulthood. So you started off by saying you thought you lived in a family where all of this was normal. When did you realize that this behavior was not quote unquote normal? You know, it was a gradual realization to um, notice little things about other families that at first seemed like, oh, wow, they're like really nice to each other. That's weird. Um, And then realizing as I observed other families that, and more and more, you know, that, that that was much more the norm than what my household was. When you are a child experiencing extreme trauma, you learn to be incredibly observant because that is what is necessary for survival. So I would observe people's moods. I would observe people's reactions. I would observe what was going on in a larger context to know if um, family members were going to be angry if family members were going to be in a bad mood or good mood or um, a mood where they were distracted by things and so maybe I would be safer. And with all of that, it made me a, a keen observer of other families and other people as well. I think that there was a part of me that always knew that some of the things were wrong. Uh, I think we're just wired in a way um, and research supports this to consider incest to be a um, to to be kind of a crime against our own personhood um, when perpetuated uh, by especially by an older male figure Mm -hmm. and so I began watching and I would say it was really solidly by middle school when kids talked a lot more about their home lives than we really did in elementary school that I realized 
wait, these experiences that other people are sharing seem to be like real and true rather than what I had been taught to do, which is there's things you share that make us look good. And then there's things that no one shares. And so we, so that we don't look bad. And I thought everybody had those stories that no one shares. So we don't look bad. And it was, um, you know, around 11 or so that I realized that. So Shannon, you mentioned your father. When the person who is supposed to protect you and that you're supposed to be able to trust the most betrays you in such a horrific manner. How do you then move forward and build any type of a relationship with another person? It's hard. Um, And it was made even more difficult by the fact that my father was a high ranking official in the local sheriff's office. So It not only was my father who's supposed to care for me, but how do you go to the police when it's the police that are hurting you? Hmm. Um, So for for me, honestly, a lot of uh, the reality has been that I am very slow to trust. I am very cautious about letting people in and kind of to a fault can try to be independent. I'm learning more and more, and a lot of my story in the book is, is Speaking to that, um, uh, the how to trust and how I came to trust Lee, my husband, uh, who I met when I was 18, um, and a large part of trusting him was that I got a horrible case of mono and really just didn't feel well enough to be second-guessing everything like I usually would. You, in addition to these emotional scars that you've just described, you've had other impacts on your life. Can you share some of those with us as well? Yeah. um, I have some physical disabilities that are lasting from physical and sexual abuse. I've had um, six knee surgeries, I think now, six spinal surgeries, and things are much better, but will never be what they should have been. Um, at various times, I experienced different levels of disability as, the, as a result of all of that. And even had um, my most recent spine surgery was just this past January. And additionally, um, I think it's really, really important that we are mindful that our minds are as much a part of our body as our knees and spine are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have um, pretty severe PTSD and uh, require a lot of really um, robust mental health supports that thankfully um, I've been able to put into place and have an excellent therapist who I've been working with for quite a while. Um, so one of the things that I hope is a takeaway from the book is that there is absolutely no shame in seeking help you know that more often than not it's when we don't seek help and we don't acknowledge how hard things are that we end up taking the hurt that we've experienced and turning it into hurt against other people so shannon you've experienced tremendous tremendous tragedy in your life going through all of what happened as a child then you you met a man you fell in love and then he passed away And so you have all of these emotional and these physical scars. For anyone who is listening, we all go through different challenges in one degree or another. But with what you were able to move forward from, how on earth did you do this? How did you get from that place where you were so broken to writing a book about living brave? How did you make that leap? Well, I think all of us are a lot braver than we know. And and then circumstances can end up making it necessary for that to rise up more than it might have otherwise. I don't aim to be perfect. I used to. And that was something that would catch me up all the time because no one is perfect. And I would... Um, end up beating myself up a lot in addition to emotional and spiritual abuse that I experienced from others. I think, and, and I write about this, that taking the next right step is 
all that any of us can do. And while my trauma and and tragedies have been on the much more severe end, if we're going to rank things, whatever is hard for any given person is their hard. It's not that mine is worse or theirs is worse. You know, we all are experiencing difficult things, particularly in light of COVID, but in light of just life in general. And so I I hope one of the things that my book conveys is that we all have really difficult things. We all are able to take one step at a time, that we're all able to care for ourselves in mind and body, that we're all able to say yes to the hard things that we know are the right things and bravely say no to the things that are not anything that we need to be doing. We talk a lot about the bravery of saying yes, but not as much the bravery of saying no. Shin, can you share with our listeners a a strategy or two from your book that can help someone be brave? So one of the things, and, and I come back to this again and again, and it doesn't seem like a major thing, but breathing exercises, there's a ton of different breathing exercises you can do. The one that I often do is called box breathing, which I'll explain in just a moment. Our breath helps us regulate emotion. There is um, all sorts of science that backs that up. Um, there's a lot of basis for, uh, in that knowledge for yoga and for other, um, uh, activities that are known for reducing stress, um, as well as even just in, in prayer, uh, praying and breathing as sort of a, a combination. We know that that helps get us to the place where we're not reacting out of um, pure reactionism, you know, uh, that we're actually being able to connect with ourselves. So with box breathing, um, I usually draw a box in the air when I'm doing it, or at least very smallly, um, kind of in my lap of you breathe one, or you hold your breath one, two, three, four, Um, You exhale, one, two, three, four. You hold that, one, two, three, four. And then you um, inhale, one, two, three, four. And that pausing allows us to get to to a more grounded place than we often are. So there's other grounding things um, that I use a lot, like, counting different items in a room, for example, uh, that I didn't include in the book, but plan to um, be be publishing an article about soon, because so much of our body and our brain are connected. But the, um, the other principle that I think is really important um, and want to share with listeners now is that we all are brave in our own ways and it doesn't look like something that is prescribed so often we call certain things brave and usually they're the showier things they're the more um more flashy more um celebrated more visible things and sometimes the brave thing is getting out of bed sometimes the brave thing is going into work after a project didn't go well. Sometimes the brave thing is continuing to work on a relationship or walking away from the relationship. And all of that is can only really be determined by connecting with your own self and your own experiences often through, I'll give another plug for therapy, um, often with somebody who is trained or at least someone who has proven trustworthy in your life so that you can um, learn what brave looks like for you in terms of what your principles and values are. Um, 
I would love to give one size fits all advice that would be perfect for everyone. Um, but that would, wouldn't be true or authentic. Um, because while we all do need to connect with ourselves to know, um, really w- and check in with ourselves to know what the next brave thing is. There isn't a universal, okay, if this is happening in my life, what do I do sort of answer. The book is Living Brave, Lessons from Hurt, Lighting the Way to Hope. If you'd like to get more information about Shannon and her work, you can visit shannondingle.com. Shannon, in about 30 seconds or less, what's a takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? I would love for listeners to know that they are loved and lovable and able to do the next thing. So often we aren't brave because we doubt ourselves or because we think that we don't have the capacity that someone else who we think is brave has. And the reality is that we are made to be brave in responding to the next things and that is something that isn't just for like some elite class no this is something that is for everyone shannon thank you so much for joining us it has really been a pleasure having you on the show yeah thank you for having me thank you for joining us i hope you found the show informative change your attitude, change your life. We believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided is the opinion of our guest and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.